Hello Bill, my name is Alicia and what I would like to know is do you think time is real? For example, sometimes an hour can feel very short and sometimes it can feel very long depending on your perception. So then is time subjective? If it's a measurement of something, what is it a measurement of? I'd really like to know your thoughts about time. Thank you. Alicia, that is fantastic. Notice that in English, we don't have any other word for time except time. It's unique. It's this, it's this wild fourth dimension in nature. This is one dimension, this is one dimension, this is one dimension, and time is the fourth dimension. And we call it the fourth dimension uh, not just in theoretical physics, but in engineering. You know, I worked on four-dimensional autopilots. So you tell where you want to go and what altitude it is above sea level and then when you want to get there. Like you can't get there at any time. We have a whole bunch of other words. We have appointments. We have morning, afternoon, evening, noontime, nighttime. We have a whole bunch of words describing periods of time. But when it comes to actual time, we just have this one word. It's a strange and surprising thing. So along this line, in my opinion, which as you know is correct, I'm kidding. In my opinion, time is both subjective and, and objective. What we do in um, science and engineering and in life, astronomy, is measure time as carefully as we can because it's, it's so important to our everyday world. You go to plant crops. You want to know when to plant them. You want to know when to harvest them. If you want to have a global positioning system that enables you to determine which side of the street you're on from your phone, you need to take into account both the traditional passage of time that you might be familiar with watching a clock here on the Earth's surface and the passage of time as it's affected by the speed of the spacecraft and the passage of time as it's affected by the gravity of the Earth itself both special and general relativity. It's astonishing. We work very hard to measure time with all sorts of uh, extraordinary clocks, but there is no question with our brains, which are wet chemical computers, we lose track of time. We don't know if it feels, if it, sometimes it feels short, sometimes it feels long. And it's just the nature, I think, of being constrained by measuring time with our brains. This is why we build instruments to measure time outside of ourselves, externally. But it is a great question. And then the whole idea of science really started with this thing people used to call natural philosophy. And when you throw in the word philosophy, for me, you start asking this question, like, can you know anything, let alone what time it is or how long it's been since something happened or whether or not or when something will happen in the future or whether or not it'll happen at all. These are philosophical questions and I, I feel that you can get yourself pretty spun up in, in saying to yourself there's no way to know anything. You can philosophically you can't know anything. On the other hand it seems to me we can know a great deal objectively about nature and that includes time and its passage. One last thought, Alicia. When I think about my grandfather, he had no idea, no understanding of relativity. For, not because he was a bad person, because no one had discovered it yet. And so I just wonder what else it is about the nature of time, or the nature of what physicists, astrophysicists like to call space-time, or the where you talk about these four dimensions at once, X, Y, Z, and T. I cannot help but wonder there is something else undiscovered about time, and perhaps you and I will be alive. Not much more time will have passed before this discovery is made. Carry on. Excellent question. Thank you.